Hey everybody and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today, um, while I'm still working on the second half of the ladder uh, in our in our Haven project, I thought uh, I, for a bit of filler, so I do apologize, hopefully this is still useful to a lot of you, but as a filler, um, I'm going to just do um, work on a few other very important things that come within UE5. Um, and cover a few other things for a different project. So I'm th I feel like because I'm keeping it to space and there's not really a whole lot of environmental things at the moment to show you off, I thought I'd do something a little bit more environmental. So to begin with, uh, all I've done is I've created a levels folder and I've created a persistent level. Uh, it's just a blank level that I've called persistent level. That it will retain some importance uh, shortly. Um, and to begin with, all I'm doing is I'm going to get uh, out of the window, I hope, or it might be the tools. I think I actually have to select mode. Uh, let's go landscape. There we go. Select the mode as landscape. That's something totally different for U5, I didn't realize. Uh, so we've got this big, lovely terrain. Now I'm probably, there we go. It's a little bit culling there um, sure uh, sure oh my god what is this right now uh, oh, import, I just said import all Jesus oh my days what's happening it's because I'm trying to download stuff uh, okay so we've got this lovely terrain now you need to kind of decide first off if it's big enough um, I think for me that's probably going to work. Um, I never really click fill world because I just think that's too much and it can cause some issues unless you're using world partition but I'm not a big fan of world partition um, personally I think it's still not quite where it needs to be. I will cover it in a tutorial but uh, for now I, I'm not a big fan. I prefer world, I do prefer um, uh, world composition. Now, I've just realized I'm actually making a bit of a rookie mistake right now. Um, and the reason for that is I don't actually need this landscape currently. I need to actually enable world composition. Now, I might ask you a question up here. Just say yes, it's fine. Um, and we need to then just drag in a few things. Now, the persistent level will work on everything you want consistently loaded at all times so things like a directional light would be something you would always want and a skylight probably is something you'd always want uh, you also probably want a uh, if I search for it under all I want a sky I'm just going to use the one that comes with uh, unreal sky sphere now it might take a while for the shaders to compile, so just leave that compiling. <coughs> Excuse me. And you probably want something like um, atmosphere, atmosphere, sky atmosphere. There we go. So we'll leave that to compile for now, and we'll work on those things uh, once they have finished compiling. It shouldn't take too long. So now you've got a few things that you want to remain in your um, persistent world. You now want to create a few more levels. Now, oh god, I do that every tutorial. Um, now, you might want to set yours up differently. You might have um, a base idea. But this is basically perfect for anything that is used in sort of MMO style games uh, or very large levels. Okay. Now, I, I set mine up like a bit of a grid. So I'm just going to call it level one uh, or underscore one might work better. Um, but this is kind of a bit like setting up a map. Now I'm not actually going to do anything else for a second. I'm just going to do the one. Uh, and the reason for that is that I want to copy and paste because I want them all to be the same size. I want them to be all tall. I want them all to use the same materials and things like that. So let's open up level one, save everything as is. 
Uh, once this is finished loading, it should open up to another blank screen. Okay, so now we've got level one. Uh, all we need to do now is go back into landscape. And I'm just going to set this up as is. I'm not going to change anything to it. I think it's fine the way it is. Now, before I go any further, I am using uh, some paid for content. Uh, this is called Brushify. Uh, it is, for me personally, I think it is a brilliant and worthwhile tool for anyone to use if you're looking for uh, realism in your game um, and you're looking for convenience. You can't go wrong with a Brushify pack. They, they do all sorts of different ones. If you're looking for an Arctic world, a um, forest, greenery, country roads, they do all sorts of stuff, but they are worth it. They're not exactly the cheapest, but they are very much worth it, definitely. Um, but I've had these for a while now, and I, they're always my go-to. As soon as I'm picking out a material, they are my go-to, for sure. So, now go to Landscape. Um, I'll just drag one of those. I'm going to use the MI Landscape. I think that's the right thing to do, but we'll see. Um, it might bug out a little bit here. Um, but just give it a second and eventually you should be able to drag that bad boy in there. Set that. Uh, you can now close your content drawer. Click on something to get rid of it, I'm sure. Ah, oh, I'll get rid of it. And create. Um, now, you won't be able to see anything in here because we've got no light, but you can see that we could potentially paint on said landscape. But we're not going to do anything for a second. We're just going to save this. Save all. And we're going to head back into our persistent level. Now, if I go over to here where it says levels, you'll see I've got level one now. Now, it's still loading those those um, shaders, so hopefully it won't take too long. But we're going to load this level. And now we can see it. Oh, gosh, that's a bit buggy. There we go. Whoa, that's better. So we've got a level now, um, but there's nothing on it. So what we want to do is we want to select our level. We want to go back into landscape mode. We want to go to paint. And for all of these, we need to set up a layer info. Um, just set it all up for all of them, like so. You're going to have to go down and do each one of them, give them a good old layer info. I did cover a tutorial about um, sounds, foot sounds. This is where it would come really, really, become really, really helpful to have something like that. Okay, so now, depending on which one I paint, it should. Um, it should paint them. Uh, I think it's still um, sending in textures. I've basically done this very quickly, so it's not working as well as I hoped. But while we're waiting for all that stuff to to kind of comp um, to compile, we'll start working on our some more world composition. So now, all I'm doing here is I'm just duplicating exactly the same tiles. There we go. It's loaded in. <laughs> there you go. Lovely stuff. Um, so that's what it looks like now at this moment. So we've got our first square. Our level one square now we want to make it seamless so that they all tile together um, one by one and then that way we can edit them with our terrain tool as we please so to do that what we need to do is we need to save first off so we keep our four levels and I am just gonna double click on our persistent level again so reclose it everything's loaded it really nicely uh, I only want to load in level one. There we go, lovely level one. Now what I want to do is there's a summons world composition, and it looks like this. Uh, it looks a bit rough around the edges at the moment. Uh, as you can see, it's moved in world as I'm moving this, so it works seamlessly together. What we can do is we can add adjacent landscape to level. And I want to add this to the right, so plus on the X. Load into levels. I want this to be level 2. 
I do want to replace it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and that prints in level two. Click on this one. We want to assign adjacent. Click on the Y. Well, I want that to be level three. And if I keep doing this, it will all slot in like a puzzle piece. It's so simple. Um, but what this is actually doing uh, is if I'm here, what world composition does is it looks at how far my camera should be rendering. And I'm sure there is a way to change it. We'll look at it down the line. But if I then put a, a square in here, if it doesn't hit my camera render, it doesn't load this in. So what it's doing is, is as long as you're making sure stuff's in the correct levels, like your foliage and things like that, uh, it will only load that in if that square is loaded in. Now, if I put it on my persistent, like if I have items, for example, or houses or cars, if I put those on my persistent level, they will always load because the persistent level is always loaded. Irrelevant of what level I am on, level one, two, three, four, anything in the persistent will always load. Whereas this is all done, level one to four is done based on your camera rendering distance, which again, as I said, you can you can change. There is a way to change it. But for now, let's keep going. So that's world composition in a nutshell. Now that's set up, it is set up uh, for good. It shouldn't have any issues. Now it is a pretty big world space, I'm not going to lie. But now that it's set up and I'm in the persistent, I should in theory be able to paint over any landscape. It does not matter which one I'm affecting, it will do it all seamlessly. This is why I love world composition. It makes uh, amending your landscapes an absolute breeze. Let's make it a lot bigger so I can get all that lovely grass down. Now, there's another great thing about Brushify. I'm not, I swear to God, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. I don't get sponsors. I'm too small. So just trust me when I say, when I say, you know, it's worth having. And you'll see in a minute. Because it, it, this looks terrible now, but you wait till we press play. It's going to look brilliant. Um, the grass effects and all that sort of stuff. It looks awesome. Um, I really do love, <laughs> I really do love Brushify. So... There you go. So we've got a fully, it's going to be huge as well. This is a huge bit of land to play on, right? These four squares alone are massive. I'm falling for days. Um, so it automatically brings in your grass and you can see our culling distance is loading in grass as we get closer. Now the textures aren't properly loaded, so it's going to look a bit rough around the edges, of course, but it is loaded in and look how huge uh, of a land we now have to work with. Just by loading in four levels at a time, it's loaded in a huge amount of workspace now for us, okay? So, that's not the only thing I want to cover in this tutorial. This is just the beginning um, for this. I mean, I don't want it to be too long, obviously. Um, but if we go to Sculpt now, this is the last tool I'm going to look at today. Uh, we can now mess around. And this is where Brushify really does... Um, change things up so if i put a load in there it automatically works out a, a, a blend space between the levels it's automatically put into the materials so we now can seamlessly load in rocks grass and that rock material so look at this if i spawn up here ah the, the, the textures have loaded in now look at that grass how cool is that it looks amazing right and there is a remove procedural, so it will remove the grass, so you don't have it coming through buildings and stuff, which is really, really useful. And we've also got the rock uh, materials. And, it, and they've updated this definitely, right? This isn't this isn't how it used to be. This is way more in detail than it was uh, probably a year or so ago. So the, 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 the person who created Brushify really does care about this project and, and constantly up, updates it. But uh, yeah, so it's such a cool thing to have the Brushify pack. Now you don't need the Brushify pack for this. You can create your own uh, landscape texture and this will all work exactly the same. Um, but yeah, this is just showing you the landscape tools and how good comp uh, world composition can be to make your worlds 
that little bit bigger. Uh, and you think we've done this in 16 minutes and I have a huge landscape now to work with. I've got all the tools I need to mess around um, and sort of create these like hills and things if I wanted to. I mean, Christ, if I just do this um, and let's pull the tool strength down, brush fall off to maybe less and I can just build like little hills and obviously you know you get the little small rock effect if you want it and if you don't want that just smooth it out a bit more so you've not got um, as big a hills you know there you go I've got and you can just easily just build these cool sort of little areas up and you can even add weather erosion um, to it if you wanted to make them a little bit more jagged if you want like look how much rougher that looks now just by adding a bit of erosion uh, you can add some noise if you want to and that just pushes down and up on the landscape and that's taking me, you know, like, it's not perfect. If I spent, you know, this is this is taking a minute on this, right? If I spent an hour on this, you can imagine the difference this would make in an hour. So it's a great tool to have. And um, the world composition, I think, is personally, as I said, I think it's so much better than um, world partition, personally. I mean, I haven't played around with world partition enough, but... For the sake of 20 minutes, you can create a huge scene for your player to run around in. And then you think you add all the stuff on top of this, like buildings and roads, which we'll cover a bit of that in this little series. Whenever I need a little episode to push out, I'll, I'll jump to this series and work on it some more. Uh, I think the next thing I'm going to cover in this series is probably foliage, because again, so easy. Once you've got the, the actual assets, it becomes such a breeze. Um, so we'll cover that in the next episode of this series. But thank you so much guys for watching. Um, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Um, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.